Okay then, I think that the majority of people are in now. So um, hello everyone and welcome to this panel discussion, Why Data Analytics is Everyone's Business. I'm Louise Bennett, Tigers Marketing Manager, and I'm your host for today's panel discussion. Joining me on the panel today is Mark Lambert, who is responsible for telecoms at Lookers. Um, and Lookers is a UK leading motor retail and after sales group. And Mark is a customer of Tiger, but interestingly, as well as using our solution at Lookers, he's also used it in, in a previous role um, for the NHS. So he has lots of experience using data analytics in two very different contexts, which is why we're really pleased he's on the panel today. Thanks for and you'll invite. see that we, <laughs> yeah, it's great to have you. And we're also joined by Caroline Lewis, who many of you will recognise. She's a long-standing member of the Tiger team, and she's currently our sales director, but has experience in pre-sales, business development, and has a passion for technology. And I know firsthand that this is actually a subject that's very close to Caroline's heart. So I'm absolutely delighted that she's joined us on the panel today. So thank you, Caroline. Morning, everyone. <laughs> um, just some minor ha housekeeping before we get started. There will be time for questions at the end, um, so please just pop these in the meeting chat and then when we finish the main discussion, we'll get, the, get to those and put those to the panel. So we're actually going to um, start things off with a poll. Um, as this discussion sort of puts uh, the role of data at the front and centre, um, of, of how the role that it plays within work in our lives. We're going to start with a poll to ask you who handles data within your organisation. So hopefully that's going to appear on screen now. So the question is, who handles data within your organisation? Is it IT, finance, senior management, customer service, or maybe it's someone else? It's actually multiple choice. So please select all that apply and press submit, and then um, we can have a little look at the responses. OK. So that's interesting to see at the moment as it stands, the majority of people are saying that IT is handling data within their organisations. So that's quite interesting, Mark and Caroline, isn't it? No, absolutely. Go on, Mark. I think I would agree with that initially. The the the, the source or, or the people that can get that data are IT. Um, as, as companies are increasingly IT dependent, that that's where the data comes into, and getting other departments to look at that data and start under understanding that data is is, is the basics of, of, of getting, you know, helping the business to to use data and, and drive decisions using data. Um, that's what I would, I would, so yes, I would go along with, yeah, data comes into IT, uh, 100%, definitely agree with that. Good. Okay, so the theme of this webinar is data is everywhere. So my first question for the panel is how important is data, especially when making business critical decisions? And I'm going to come to you, Mark, first, if that's okay. Um, yeah, uh, just kind of what I've touched on that, uh, Louise, Caroline, is is when if you haven't got the data, um, you, you're making a decision rather blind. And, um, you know, you, you're taking a best guess at what you think's happening in the business without actually being able to to back it up with any any real hard data and look at, at trends um, to, to back up what, what your customers are saying on why, why you want to take the business. So, you know, with without data, the decision is is a, a good feeling, a best guess um, decision. And, you're, you, yeah, you're. you're effectively blind to what is really going on out there. So that, that's how I feel about data. Caroline? Yeah, certainly blind is a really good analogy for it, Mark. Um, for me, it's all about that credibility as well. When you as a decision maker, as someone taking that responsibility within your organisation as to a recommendation of how to move forward, that data is giving you that credibility that you've got half a chance that you do trust 
what you're saying because you've actually done your homework on it and without that data you haven't got that ability to then produce that disruption and and convince the rest of the organization where you're heading with it so it does remove that risk and again to your point mark it's about analyzing that trend as well now that could be the last few minutes is what you need to actually make a reaction in a contact center or a, a kind of a yeah. call environment. But actually that seasonal, monthly, annual performance and the data that that actually brings adds a huge amount of support to what's actually going on in the organization. Absolutely. That, 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 yeah, that's, Carry on. that's correct. <laughs> just, just expanding a bit on that um, within Lookers, we um, we have approximately 160 sites, and uh, my role initially was to get all the sites onto a, a, a single telecoms platform. Um, so, so going around the sites, the, the thing that we continually kept getting asked was, can we produce some data to show the amount of calls that are first off coming into a, a uh, dealership and then who was actually answering those calls um, and we needed a tool to report on it and as um, Louise previously mentioned that I worked in the NHS and would use Tiger as a tool previously so I, I did turn to Tiger for that um, reporting tool um, and happily it, it, it has given us what we need to get that insight in, into the, the call flow within the dealership and essentially who wasn't wasn't answering calls and being able to give the, the data to back up, you know, and, and let managers make a decision. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I know we're going to kind of come back to that um, particular use case as we make our way through the discussion. One thing I just wanted to pick up on initially though was that data analytics has obviously been something as a of a buzzword throughout the pandemic um, Caroline and we've obviously seen a huge spike in the number of people working from home would you say that this type of data has been critical to helping businesses to um, survive and I guess even thrive beyond um, the pandemic mm -hmm. and I, I'll, I'll start with you Caroline sure no it's it's been a huge impact um, across all sectors from our own experience, our own customer base and our, our partner and opportunity discussions as well. Sectors have been impacted not only by their own change to behaviours, moving to work from home environment and everything that comes with that challenge. And I know Mark's got some great examples of that, but also their customer interaction, how their customers are now having to deal with them with the idea that, for example, retail for NHS, people aren't face to face anymore in some of these organisations. So how do you now capture your customers, capture that interaction? And when I say customers, that can be your own staff, it could be students, it could be whatever area you've got to go on. So from our perspective, what we're seeing is that a lot of people are tre treating the pandemic as a bit of a clean slate. What went before is of no longer any use to them. Being able to get that gut feel of standing on shop floor, being part of your team, sitting in a group of 20, 30, 50 people and get that gut feel for how that business is operating at that moment in time is really hard when you're faceless to it. And you're sitting at home, they're sitting at home, that you're all in disparate parts of the, the country in, in um, faceless offices, whatever it happens to be. That gut feel of getting that temperature for the business is really hard. So falling back on that data and being able to trust and unify that data and get that to everybody that actually needs it is a huge part of what we've seen in the change of, of our organisations over the last year or so. Yeah, and is that reflective of um, how you've been using the data at Lookers, Mark? Yes, it, it's um, like I've just touched on, you know, we, we started putting the, the, the tiger in before the pandemic hit and started to use it to analyse what was happening within groups within our dealerships. So moving on into the pandemic um, and and having the flexibility within our, with our telecoms platform to get people working from home very quickly, but then also being able to say to, to management and, and uh, directorship and everything, look, you've, you've got staff working from home now, 
we can still give you the report on you know how how well your staff are performing from home um which is very important it gives them the the confidence you know that those teams that were like Caroline touched on there all working together and the manager can get a good feel for how the team's doing that that, that daily contact's gone so you're now relying more and more on the data to, to be able to say that team's working really well, that particular ind- individual's done, done outstanding. Um, you know, we, we had um, service teams working from home very early on in the pandemic, um, you know, the first lockdown, and we could see immediately that those guys, people working from home were working as hard and, and answering customer calls efficiently and they, they, they were putting more time into it if, if anything because maybe there wasn't a distraction of being in office you know it it it, it just drove the, the the belief that yes this is the right thing to do um, and and built that confidence that we, we could open more parts of the business up very quickly and and give management the 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 data to be able to say, yes, the teams are working very well. Um, so it, it was very much, a, I think, an eye-opening experience for, for a lot of people when, you know, suddenly the, these teams who of people who previously everybody had wanted to be office-based and management thought, oh, if, if you let these people work from home, they'll, they'll not. You know, they'll, they'll be on the internet shopping, maybe, and, and not doing the, the job, the job that they're employing, and then customer satisfaction will it'll, it'll, it'll go down. But it it had the opposite effect, and and because, like I keep saying, we had the data, the, the management quickly gained confidence in, in in those teams working from home. So yeah, it was it was very good. Um, it, it's also kind of change things around within lookers where departments were very much expected to work from the office day to day that has now totally changed around and our our service centers throughout the country still even though there's, there's no restrictions they still have 50 60 percent of their staff working from home because it it fits in better there's more flexibility so they, they can move people around shift patterns and and again Give give a better customer experience. So it's, it's been very important having that data to to be able to give the business a, a, a true picture of what's happening, and um, you know be able to trust that staff can work from home very efficiently. That's really interesting, isn't it? Um, and Caroline, have you got anything to follow up there, particularly with regards to the date, the impact that data can have on organisational culture and behaviour? Yeah, I think Mark's point is absolutely an excellent one in terms of how you've involved your staff and given visibility of that information to them so that it has actually supported a real positive for them within the organization and that's kind of where I I, I come into my kind of love data share it <laughs> total advocate yeah. of data democracy from my perspective because there is that concern within an organization at times that that data becomes a big brother kind of monitoring situation and we really do have to move on from that and a huge part of that is that ability to number one communicate with your your organization the business aims of what be really transparent where are your challenges at the moment what are you trying to resolve with this and how is this data going to support that some fantastic staff wins there for lookers out of it at the same point as giving that wider customer service and actually that's a win for the staff as well because it's increased business it's a happier transaction with the customer you you're more positive on those interactions rather than it causing more issues for the for the staff so all of these areas flow into trying to identify those challenges and then communicate how that data can support an improvement to those challenges And so visibility and ownership of that data comes into a huge part of it as well. But by doing that, opening it up in a really secure way, but giving 
everybody some responsibility for their area of the business and that eyes wide open approach market you know my staff were more productive working from home actually <laughs> yeah it was a it was a big shock to seeing, some people. seeing that data yeah. kind of thing so that in my mind enhances your culture your organization behaviors because it's leading to a unity it's a shared purpose but it's actually yeah. coming from the leadership team and that data but it's actually the the worker bees that are able to to improve and and act upon it so giving them that that trust and, and responsibility is a huge part of it absolutely just on the on the on the back of that as well caroline what was it it you know you touched on the, the big brother watching um it, and we we very much put this data together and, and pushed it out to the business not as a as you know we we're watching every move you make and we're giving you managers it, it's it's about people also being able to see how the team's performing you know the, the members of the team so they, they they then have that mindset that well i don't want to be at the bottom of that that list whenever the, the data comes up so just the fact that that data is there it's not necessarily there to to beat people up with it it's there to you know, maybe motivate people and you know what this this week i want to be at the the top of that that list and you know or, but again on on the other hand we've, we've also seen it help management identify when people are maybe having problems you know and and somebody's at the who's continually struggling to to answer those calls or, or, or be productive from home it's not necessarily that they don't want to do the work it's it's, it's possible that they've got issues with child care or, or you know the, the struggling with the mental health you know that that's that's a big thing with the pandemic and just because somebody's at the, the bottom of a list it, that can strike up a conversation between a, a, a manager and a team member and you know something like you know Caroline are, are you okay can I is there anything I can help you with and, and that drives uh, well actually I need some help with this or I've had trouble with so it, it, it like coming back to the big brother argument it, it's it's definitely helped people within teams that were maybe against data and and, and seeing things being analyzed that actually it, it's not being used in that way and, it, and it's, a, it's had a very positive impact on on, on teams and, and productivity and you know helping mm-hmm. managers that are, that are away from the teams like I said earlier on being able to connect with the teams, you know, and say, have you got that an issue and use it in that way. So so data can be taken a lot of different ways and hopefully it's used in a positive way and not just to be the the big brother watching tactic that a a lot of people think it is, you know. Yeah, I really like... Go on. Carry on. <laughs> I'll say it's a huge point from my perspective when when we hear people talking in terms of IT own the data, it's IT's responsibility. But Mark, that's exactly what we're hearing from our customer base at the moment is that actually IT might own that data, but it's the individual managers who can watch and support their teams yeah. and where they are identifying those slight challenges and something that needs to be be dealt with in a, a slightly softer way it are likely to a not see that subtlety of something different within a team you've got mm-hmm. thousands hundreds whatever people that you're looking at so that subtlety of data comes from that manager level or or kind of team leader level but also it's then a case of actually how well equipped is that team leader or manager to deal with all of the challenges that might be shown from that data. And that's where HR and other parts of the organization touching on your wellbeing measure really do come into play that you can grant them access to saying, right, here's the data, here's the supporting information, here's the performance so far, here's my challenge with this, help. And it allows that to be coaxed out in a a supportive way rather than, as you say, that, that big stick of <laughs> why you know four in the ranks yeah I definitely really like that point around using data to connect teams and connect with people um I really like that one one 
One question I had was going back to something we've previously talked about, Mark, around how you've used the data to improve the customer journey and customer engagement and experience and so on. Can you um, give us a little bit more information about that and specifically um, how people uh, responded to receiving that data? Did they, did they always embrace it, for example, or did you have some challenges there? No, there was, um, when, when we first put Tiger in and we started producing um, data out the dashboards, um, the, the way we have our dealership set up, we, have, we, we monitor the reception, the sales team, the service team and the parts team. That, that's how we kind of monitor how the, the calls have flown into the dealership. And we, we could see answer rates less than 30% at, at some parts of the dealership and some. Um, so, so by kind of looking at where the biggest issues were and, and then going to site and actually understanding what was going on on the, on the ground, we, we realised, and, and the, the data also kind of pointed us in the right direction, that a lot of sites were just pumping all the calls into reception. Now, best will in the world, two receptionists can't handle five, 600 calls a day when you've got um, people walking in, you know, to pick cars up, to, to inquire on new calls, to, to ask, where's the parts department? So, what we suggested and, and then again, then the data kind of proved was that if, you know, I, I've got my car in for a service, um, I, I don't want to speak to a receptionist because the receptionist can't give me the answers I want. So we, we put the calls direct into the service team. Um, and we, we were, again, we were challenged on the data to say, once we did that, that we saw what the answer rates were there. And we were again, challenged on are these answer rates correct i mean you know the, the managers and, and staff especially when you're together you form that bond and, and the belief is my staff are great you believe what they're telling them as, as it coming in there and saying well actually your staff are not performing and not answering the calls like you think they are we then kind of had to take some enablers within the business, if you like, uh, and explain to them the, the, the call journey from, from the call coming in from the customer, how, how it flowed through the business, how the, the system, and, and make them understand the technology a bit, which as, as yeah. you know, a, a manager sitting there that's managing a sales team or a service team, that's not your daily business, you know, but by getting just some some leaders in in the company to be able to understand and then go well actually this data is correct and then then trust the data and, and present it to the teams we we start get, gaining traction and that data now becomes part of a a weekly um dashboard that we now produce that the whole business use so it it, it took a while to gain traction and trust but we, we eventually got there and, and it's produced massive um Customer service, you know, satisfaction's gone up massively. We've gone from 30% calls answered to, to over 90% in a lot of parts of the wow. business. Um, I was just down in, in um, Canterbury at the beginning of the week, um, a site that was really struggling. We, we, we went in there, we made some changes, and because we've got this data available, they, they were struggling, the sales team was struggling down at 40%. Just yesterday, they were at seventy-eight percent. One day, with going in, making some changes, explaining to staff and managers how the changes were going to affect them. It's, it's, it's huge, you know. And, and, and the customer getting answered by somebody that that can answer their questions or the queries, or, or yes, I've got that vehicle in stock. Make that that connection straight away. We've we've seen on on like websites have gone from can't get through to the side, nobody wants to take me call to fantastic, got through first time, um, spoke to such and such service advice. They're starting to name people personally on and to get that feedback is 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 amazing. You know, so yeah. It, yes, we've had challenges. Um 
but it, it's the way you I think it's the way you tackle those challenges and, and and work with the business to understand make them understand the data and where you're getting that data from and that it's it's trustworthy data so that, that's the challenges we had initially took took quite a while to get traction but don't give up <laughs> I think that's a huge point that we hear from from our teams all of the time mark it's about you've got that data it's now how you contextualize that and given it to somebody that with respect doesn't understand the technicalities of your infrastructure your core routing the the multi-platforms behind the scenes but they're seeing something pretty simplistic front end that gives them that good bad or indifferent solution suggestion without them needing to understand that technology and as you rightfully say once you get a few contributors who are really championing that they've got that trust they've got that faith it's saying the right things to them it might be not be what they want to hear but it's giving them enough information that actually what we need to do is shift the dial from from left to right and all is good yeah it yeah. gives them that idea of exactly how they're, they're meant to be uh, producing that and, and certainly it drags others along with you once you've got that champion in place yes yeah, so absolutely we've, 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 very much so that I mean you know we now have the data um, in, in, a, in a dashboard that we like I said we present weekly and, and that data gets presented to our direct the board of directors and um, so a very high level view for for those guys and then that that filter you can actually drill into it and again this is this is all taken out of tiger um, we, we can drill into it in uh, separate franchises so a franchise director can see how his franchise is doing overall and then down into a dealership level and, and a, a dealership manager can see how his dealership's doing and then even even more granularly down into individual teams, sales teams. So it, to be able to provide that, that data and, and have that data trusted it is, for me personally, is, is, is like a, a, a big win um, and it, it gives you a lot of satisfaction that what you've been doing and you know you, you see see those answer rates going up it it's, it confirms what you're doing it's going in the right way and because you've got the data it, it's trusted so it, it all comes back around to the having that data to be able to make those decisions and and push the the business forward even maybe that sometimes you were challenged on it it's it, it's been very positive for for lookers to have the data that comes out of Tiger, definitely 100%. Okay, that leads me quite nicely on to my next question, actually, because um, I think we're starting to uncover um, that data doesn't just belong in one department. So we've talked about improving customer experience and the customer journey. We've talked about using that those UC analytics to support the dispersed, um, possibly remote work um, workforce during the pandemic. Um, but could you also talk to us about how you actually use data within your own telecoms department, Mark? Yeah, yeah. Um, so when I first joined Lookers, um, we have all our calls coming in, in via SIP, you know, big enterprise um, system. But we had no visualisation, no, no reporting on on how many SIP trunks we were using, who in the business was using the telecom, you know, the biggest users, the, where where usage was. And we had no identity on, on where we're spending the most money. So one of the first things we were asked is, is could we actually monitor income and call volumes, outgoing call volumes, which we, with Tiger, we were, it went, we were able to do that. We then could split the bill down so that the total spend, we actually split that down into the, the franchises. Um, Lookers is made up of, of eight different franchises. You know, you've got Audi, Jaguar, Land Rover, Ford, all that kind of the, the different um, manufacturers. So for the first time ever, we were able to split our, our BT bill down into the franchises and, and used to, who was using what and, instead of just blanketing and saying, well, the small franchise is paying the biggest, same as a large franchise, we would be able to proportion it out correctly. So that, that was a, 
a, a massive win for the different directors. It was also a big win for IT because then we could get the recharge correct. It also allowed us to see what our biggest spend was. Um, and, and it turned out to be um, calls to mobile phones. <clears throat> I think the, the, the first year we had Tiger in, we, we saw something like um, a, a spend of £600,000 just on mobile phone calls. So we were able to go back to, to BT and, and renegotiate a very favourable deal on, on our, our SIP trunk usage and our um, mobile phone calls. So we, we've got a fantastic two-year deal with BT. So it, it gives you that data to, to be able to challenge your suppliers and, and you know go to another supplier and maybe and say, I'm spending this much with one supplier, what can you come up with? And again, because you've got those hard facts, you can keep a, a supplier honest. You know, and, and this day and age, it's all about getting the best deal for your business. Yes, every business has got to survive and make a profit, but that doesn't mean it's got to eat into your your company's profits as well. So that allowed us to really challenge BT and, and hold them true to, to you know the reports they were giving us, and 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 get a much much better deal off them. So again, it's been a, a massive win. Um, it, it's Tigers just just off the the mobile spend is, is more than probably six or seven <laughs> times paid for itself. So our return on investment was, you know, within within the first year we we had that absolutely nailed. So which, which again keeps keeps our IT director happy that we've put something in and, and you know, it's like, wow, it, it's given us that ability, you know. So it, data, again, has, has come to the fore there and, and helped massively. So, yeah. And that's hilarious because not only must the IT director be wiping his brow that actually this was this was the right business to, to sign off on from that perspective, but finance, surely that makes them not only very happy with it, with the savings, but more likely to give you a little bit extra budget when you are looking at something else because of everything that you're contributing towards on the bottom line. It, it, it does help when you, you know, the, again, it builds the trust that you, you take in the mm. right decisions. Um, mm. I'd, like Caroline uh, Louise said right at the beginning, I had used Tiger when I was at the NHS and, and it was a massive benefit there. Coming into the private sector and, and using it in the private sector, the, the, the benefits of, of, you know, like we've covered, we can now see what's happening in our dealerships. We can keep our suppliers true. It, it, it's, it's, data is just everywhere and it, it it's it's been used by everybody, even if some people don't think that they're relying on that data. It is absolutely everywhere. And I come back to the the poll, I think data. It, it it's everybody's business. Data. Nicely said. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to that point, we're actually going to move on to our second and final poll of the session, which looks at um, the challenges of data. So if we're just going to launch that now. So yeah, the question is, what are the biggest data challenges for leaders? And again, I think it's multiple choice. So select all that apply and then press submit. And we can have a look at those responses. So that's interesting to see that it seems to be um, at the moment quite an even split between um, all of the options. <laughs> Uh, so lots of challenges at play there with regards to data. Does that surprise you, Mark? Um, no, I, I don't think it does. I think as, I, as I'm getting more into, you know, from taking a very, I suppose, simplistic view of, of, of that's the data and I, I, as, a, as a technical, you know, engineer, you, you see things in very black and white. But as as the journey with the business and and Firstly, the, the lack of understanding of what the data was actually saying to people. Um, I, I, I think, you know, you know that it's it's made me understand where data can can be useful and things like that. But then then coming on to as the understanding's grown and the appetite for data is, 
the data is grown, managing them volumes and, and you, you effectively, you, you become almost like you need one person to just manage that volume and make sure the reports are going out at the right time. So yes, there's a challenge there. Um, and, and the lack of understanding and, and using it to drive the business again, it, it ties in. I think those two tie in, you know, that you've got to give those people in the in the business that on the face of it don't want to understand the technicalities of where it's come. You've got to be able to communicate what it's shown them and to give them that decision. And then, as I touched on earlier on, budgets, it, it, it's within Lookers 100%. It has helped us to reduce our telecoms budget from from our main supplier over the next two years massively and it will continue to give us that data to say this is our usage this this is what we think's fair and negotiate on on a on a basis coming from that we've got the data to back that up so, uh, absolutely i think it raises yeah, I, to all of Mark's points, it starts with that understanding, as you say, you know, this leads us on to, to where we're going in, in the future, really, with, with everything that we're seeing at the moment. That lack of understanding it is about having knowledge base experts getting that data and interpreting it correctly in the first place. You can start that with software. It's then the consultancies and the data analyst skills that come into its own right. So it's that initial interpretation of it that that has a huge part to play in how that then not only helps with that volume business and the, the driving it forward so certainly being able to drive it forward understand it first it yes. then gives you that understanding of what it's actually telling you and how as a business you need to react to that one so that's a huge part and it's it's that tail wagging dog business isn't it that you almost yes. have to understand the first part of it before knowing quite how you're going to be reacting to it or having that I know what my challenge is. What's the data telling me about how to to interpret that challenge? So all of that, I think, mixes in together. But again, the managing the volume one, it, it's about how overwhelmed an IT team could be or a, a, an individual data analyst could be if they kept that to themselves. It's like having that crown jewels, isn't it? The more you can start to actually share that around, it becomes less overwhelming because whilst you're responsible for consolidating that information and simplifying it, being able to get people more accessibility securely, get the bit that they need to be able to react to, yes. alleviates that stress, the burden, the responsibility, and actually helps you with the budget because you now start to devolve the idea that, well, you know, I've got seven other departments utilising this data as well. What, yeah. How can we recharge and recoup for that? Absolutely. Yes. That that's it, is how it's how the data is starting to be used now, Caroline. It's mm. you know it, as the the kind of word of mouth spread, people are now mm. coming to us and can you can you give us data on this? Can you give us data on that? You know can can we get this? Can we see what the trend was from a year ago as compared to now? You know um so so it's it's all people are, are hungry for data once they realise that that good quality data is there they're hungry for it absolutely i'm keen to ensure we've got some time at the end for questions if there are any um but just to finish off the discussion really what are your predictions in terms of data trends caroline i'll start with you first for, for kind yeah. of next year and beyond mm -hmm. yeah we're already starting to see a rise and I, I touched on it earlier this idea of the the data analysts and, and specific roles within businesses to try and consolidate those huge data volumes they're going to grow they're not by any stretch of the imagination uh, going to dissipate in the, in the next couple of months so as you've got those huge data volumes it's how you can actually take them not only from one platform now but consolidate them across multi-platforms and start to cross analyze what that information is telling you so those data analyst skills really come into their own now whether that's something that within your own business you you have a responsibility for or whether externally you look at those consultancy services uh, and build upon those is is yet to be seen. I think it does decide 
determine on the size of your business as to whether you you have the the budget to bring in those experts or or rely on companies like ourselves to to give you that extra side of it and so that's a huge part of where we're going at the moment and and definitely where we're seeing the majority of our organizations over the next 18 months two years okay mark any predictions from you yeah, I agree with Caroline. I, I think the, the, data, the data business is just going to grow. Um, you know, the, 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 like I said, you know, people are, once you get people to understand and trust that data, the, 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 um, it's, it's kind of self-evolving and, and people want more and more to be able to understand, you know, where the business is going and where they can actually take that business by making good um, decisions based on solid fact. Um, so I, I think it's just going to grow. And, and, and as you say, you know, using a, a, a product like Tiger has given us massive benefits. We now feed that data into our, our own dashboards, which we, you know, present data at totally different levels than the business where, you know, as what is appropriate to, to you know, a director just wants a, a helicopter view of, of what's happening overall, right down to a, a, a departmental manager, which wants to see how his team's actually doing so he can, you know, monitor and make sure his team's providing a, a good service, but also mm -hmm. does he need to step in and ask if somebody's struggling? So it, it, it's only going to grow is, is from my point of view. Absolutely. Um, so opening it up to the audience for questions for the panel now. Um, we've had a very quiet audience so far. No, no questions in the meeting chat. Um, so I'll, I'll give it another kind of few seconds to see if anyone's got any questions. And if not, we can wrap things up. So I'm happy to wrap things up for today then. Um, if you do obviously think of anything that you'd like to speak to us about, there are some contact details showing on the screen now. So please do get in touch with us. We'd love to have a chat with you. A huge thank you to Mark and Caroline for the discussion today. Um, we obviously hope that you found it useful and interesting. I know I certainly did. Um, and thank you to everyone for joining us. Um, a recording will be made available of this session for everyone that signed up for this event. And there is one final Tiger Talks webinar remaining in our autumn series. And that very much puts Tiger Prism in the spotlight, looking at the impact that it's had this year and um, giving you guys a preview of what's to come next year. So if you haven't signed up for that already, make sure you do. Um, so from myself and the panel, have a great day, everyone. Thank you very much and goodbye.